On May 7, 2024, just after 1.15 p.m., Whitehall police were alerted via flock cameras to a stolen vehicle taken during a previous aggravated robbery incident in Columbus. While the chase originally began in Whitehall, Whitehall police requested assistance from Columbus police. The two suspects led police on a chase in the stolen vehicle, then got out and stole another vehicle. During the chase, the driver of the stolen Hyundai struck a police cruiser head-on near Climb and River Bend roads in southwest Franklin County. Three other cruisers were damaged during the chase. As the chase continued, an officer used a pit maneuver, causing the Hyundai to crash into a tree. Officers took the teens into custody. Both have a history of stolen cars and are being held in juvenile detention until their next hearing. On May 20th, 2023, at 3.21 p.m., Arkansas State Police Trooper Jackson Shoemate initiated a traffic stop on a black GMC Sierra at US Highway 67 South at the three mile marker, along with Trooper T. Van Schoik and Trooper A. Escamilla. The vehicle was known to be driven by 42 year old Christopher Monroe. Police attempted to box him in, but failed, and the chase ensued. Early in the interaction, Trooper T. Van Schoik attempted to PIT the vehicle, but ended up sliding into a concrete barrier instead. Despite this failure, the police continued to chase Monroe as speeds climbed. Monroe and the pursuing police cars crossed over the Arkansas River, reaching speeds of around 120 miles per hour. Monroe then turned around and was hit from behind by police a few blocks later, causing his truck to roll. The GMC eventually hit a brick wall and came to a stop on its wheels. Looks like we're going to be going south on MLK. Due to the forceful crash, the police car itself nearly flipped. Monroe was then removed from the car by police who had surrounded it. Got a pay, got a pay, got a rollover. Okay, rollover. On Friday, May 28, 2021, St. Louis Metropolitan Police officers attempted to pull over 32-year-old Darn Ricks on Pennsylvania Avenue near Cherokee Street in connection to an armed robbery investigation. Ricks drove erratically through streets with children present, reaching speeds over 100 miles per hour. The vehicle eventually crashed in the 3700 block of Nebraska. Rick stopped on Nebraska Avenue, stepped out of the car, and fired at the officers. An officer leaped out of his truck and returned fire. As Ricks ran, the officer fired four shots, then lowered his arms briefly, ran, and fired eight more times. Oh, shit. Shots fired. He's still running northbound on Nebraska to Winnebago. On May 24, 2023, Cobb County police officers located a stolen vehicle driven by an armed robbery suspect on I-75 SB. The chase began after the driver attempted an armed robbery and then stole a pickup truck. As traffic became congested, the driver shifted to the road's shoulder and eventually attempted to take an exit ramp. When one of the officers used his vehicle to ram the suspect's truck, it came to a stop. Police swarmed the area and drew their weapons as the driver tossed his firearm to the ground but held a knife to his throat. The driver eventually discarded the knife and laid it down on the ground to be handcuffed. I just wanted to get away, the crying man was heard saying. 
<laughs> man, why y'all do that to me, man? I was just wanted to get away, man. Hey, time we got I just wanted to get away. Cody Davis was found guilty of six crimes connected to the high-speed chase on Ryan Street on April 10th. Video footage shows him ramming other vehicles out of the way and driving on the wrong side of the road. He was caught ditching a stolen gun, which can be seen bouncing on the pavement. The pursuit of the convicted felon driving a stolen truck ended in a dramatic crash. On June 7, 2023, around 8 p.m. officers in Dayton observed 57-year-old William Gerald Jerry Hefner driving a red pickup truck. The officer began to pursue the truck, and the driver fled. Yeah, 340 dispatch, Anna on West 2nd, continuing uh, north on Anna, Jan F7481, red Ford F-150. Dashcom footage shows the truck speeding through stop signs and red lights, nearly colliding with several cars. Hefner drove across yards and grassy areas to evade the pursuing officer. The chase ended when Hefner took a wide turn and hit a pole near the intersection of Salem Avenue and Denlinger Road in Trotwood. Eastbound on Hoover. On the Gunther. Uh, north on Gunther. On April 6, 2024, at around 4.58 a.m., West Valley Division patrol officers were traveling west in the 18500 block of Sherman Way. As they approached the intersection of Sherman Way and Reseda Boulevard, they noticed a gray 2019 Lamborghini Huracan stopped for a red traffic light with the driver asleep. The officers repositioned their patrol vehicle behind the Lamborghini. When the light turned green, the officers activated their emergency lights and siren and conducted a traffic stop on the Lamborghini. An additional patrol unit stopped to assist. The driver, 51-year-old Elliot Dugan, was found to have multiple felony warrants and the Lamborghini was reported stolen. How's it going, sir? How's it going, man? Good, good, good. Do you have a driver's license on you? After repeated attempts to get Dugan to exit the vehicle, he sped away from the scene at a high rate of speed, initiating a vehicle pursuit. During the pursuit, Dugan lost control of the Lamborghini, colliding with the center median and several trees. The force of the collision ejected Dugan from the vehicle. He was found deceased several hundred feet away on a nearby sidewalk. The Lamborghini was split into two main sections and debris from the collision damaged multiple parked vehicles along Sherman Way. 1047, let me have the frequency. Vehicle is TC, uh, major TC damage. On October 7, 2022, at about 1.29 a.m., New Haven police responded to reports of a car accident near the intersection of Chapel Street and Blatchley Avenue in the Fairhaven neighborhood. Shortly after arriving at the scene, the driver of the vehicle opened fire and shot Officer Chad Curry, striking Officer Curry twice in the shoulder and ear. Fucker! Officer Curry alighted his vehicle to return gunfire, and the suspect fled the scene. No, stop fucking... A wanted man from Alberta led police on a 12-minute chase Friday, reaching speeds of 90 miles per hour before being caught in Foley. The suspect cut through a trailer park, a neighborhood, and several business parking lots in Foley before being stopped. Authorities have released dash cam video of the chase. It started at a home on Old Foley Highway in Alberta and ended in the McDonald's parking lot in Foley 12 minutes later. Alberta police were already at the home to serve an arrest warrant on 46-year-old Charles William Moore when Moore pulled in and saw an officer. Uh, now we're to go in the Another officer picked up the pursuit as Moore crossed back over Highway 59 and into the McDonald's parking lot. Police ended the chase by wrecking Moore's car. 
Moore fled on foot and ran inside the O'Reilly Auto Parts store next door, where police arrested him without incident. In this gripping dash cam footage, Dallas police officers begin their pursuit of four crews responsible for over 40 business robberies across the city. RV Mike 3085. A car hastily reverses and speeds off from a cell phone store on East Ledbetter Drive around 11 a.m. with three police officers closely following, guns drawn towards the vehicle. The robbers are chased down with guns aimed at one of them as he lies on the floor with his hands over his head. Police vans surround the culprit, leaving him no choice but to surrender. 22 Maryland, second one's on the floor. Nope, I got him. And the 22 Maryland, Police dashcam video shows what happened on November 2015 when officers stopped an SUV containing two suspected shoplifters. The driver, 25-year-old Laquandra Borden, re-entered her car after being questioned and started to drive away with two officers hanging on. After she crashes into a patrol car, she backs up and then drives away, all while another officer tries to pull her out from the passenger side. Several officers followed in their patrol cars. One officer discharged his weapon, shooting Borden in the arm. She was charged with a number of offenses, including shoplifting and hit and run. Police are searching for three men who attempted to steal about $5,000 worth of merchandise from Home Depot. Five men loaded two cars with merchandise around 3.45 p.m. in the back parking lot of the store in the 19100 block of Interstate 45. Hey, yeah, we got two pursuits going on. Two of the men fled on foot south on David Memorial Drive and entered a wooded area east of the roadway. Simultaneously, two getaway vehicles attempted to exit the parking lot. The vehicles collided before one, a black Dodge Charger, struck a Shenandoah police cruiser, causing minor damage. The getaway vehicles drove northbound on David Memorial Drive, with the Charger turning west onto Alexandra Lane. It struck a curb, causing the front right tire to come loose. The Charger turned south onto the northbound frontage road, but the loose tire came off and narrowly missed an SUV. The disabled charger stopped, and two men, identified as Daryl Lee, 20, and Devonta Lee, 17, allegedly fled east on foot back into the Home Depot parking lot. On August 22, 2022, at approximately 1.18 p.m., Oklahoma City Police responded to reports of gunshots at 2221 SW 78th St. Deputies from the Oklahoma County Sheriff's Office exchanged gunfire while serving an eviction notice, resulting in two deputies being shot. The suspect, 35-year-old Benjamin Plank, fled in a vehicle towing a boat with several firearms. Oklahoma City Police spotted Plank and initiated a pursuit. Officer Boxwell set up on the inside shoulder of southbound Interstate 35 around Southeast 25th Street. Plank fired a rifle at officers while traveling northbound on SI 35. The officers returned fire, but did not cause any injuries. The pursuit continued eastbound on I-40, exiting at Air Depot. Boulevard Plank stopped at the Tinker Air Force Base gate and surrendered. Hey, 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 hey. A high-speed chase in Canadian County ended in a crash near the Cimarron Road exit. It started as a routine traffic stop on I-40 when authorities said Andrew Sawyers of Florida was traveling at a high rate of speed through a construction zone. It's going to be right around the 106 eastbound with Florida, Adam, Ocean, George, Union 1-0. When the driver was asked to step out of the vehicle, an OBN agent noticed him putting something in his jacket pocket. The agent asked the driver about it, 
and the driver pulled out a handgun, dropped it, and then fled in his car. The driver headed eastbound on I-40 at speeds over 100 miles per hour for 25 miles. The chase ended when the driver crashed into trees after exiting at Cimarron Road. You're gonna get tased. On the ground. Go, go, go! On November 22nd, 2023, Seattle police, with the assistance of King County Sheriff's Office air support, pursued and apprehended a drive-by shooting suspect. Shortly after 2 p.m., near the intersection of 4th Avenue South and South Lucille Street, police located a vehicle suspected to be involved in a drive-by shooting. The vehicle was reported stolen and was also associated with a reported burglary. When officers attempted to stop the vehicle, it took off at a high rate of speed. Officers pursued the vehicle and eventually stopped the pursuit using a pit maneuver in the 900 block of Airport Way South. This new dash cam video reveals a wrong way police chase on Highway 401 that tragically ended. A U-Haul truck going the wrong way was pursued by about 20 police vehicles leading to a chaotic situation. Including at least seven giving chase in the opposite direction to traffic. That's more police cars than previously reported. The incident in Ontario turned tragic as it resulted in a crash involving a family claiming the lives of a three-year-old boy and his grandparents visiting from India. The baby's parents, who were in the vehicle, were rushed to the hospital. The family's loss in that fiery crash is now becoming clearer. The police chase reportedly began with a liquor store robbery, where suspects threatened an off-duty policeman with a knife. The 21-year-old U-Haul driver was found dead, and another person was severely injured and taken to the hospital. Police cars gave chase, but investigators wouldn't comment on media reports saying the pursuit had actually been called off before reaching the highway. This intense body cam video shows a Tempe police officer chasing a fleeing burglary suspect through backyards and over fences this Tuesday. Thanks to neighbors' help identifying the suspect, police caught this burglar who left evidence inside the home and was wearing victim's clothes. A police chase that began in Tinley Park ended violently in Chicago Friday morning when a car full of alleged armed robbers crashed into a police SUV, resulting in the deaths of two suspects and injuries to four Chicago police officers. The deceased suspects were identified as Jimmy Malone, 26, and Ronald Arrington, 22, both from the 12400 block of South Union Avenue. None of the officers suffered life-threatening injuries. All four were in the SUV that was hit by the other car at the intersection of 124th and Union in the West Pullman neighborhood. Oh, shit! Kyle, give me fire! See if you need to scatter to a 1050 with him. Give me fire out here! The chase began after an armed robbery at a Tinley Park restaurant. It spilled into Chicago, prompting CPD assistance. Witnesses reported the car being chased slammed into an unmarked police SUV which then crashed into a corner home, destroying a metal wheelchair ramp. The pursued car rolled over, with all four occupants injured with two critical cases. A Fridley police officer suffered minor injuries in a crash involving another car Friday morning. The officer was heading southbound on University Avenue NE near Mississippi St. NE with emergency lights attempting to catch up to a semaphore violator. As the squad car proceeded through the intersection, most traffic on Mississippi Saint yielded for the squad, but one vehicle did proceed through and struck the squad. The squad, a 2015 Ford Utility, overturned and landed on its roof. The officer, who was wearing his seatbelt, was taken to a local hospital. The adult male driver and adult female passenger in the other car also suffered minor injuries. The passenger was also taken to an area hospital. The driver is cooperating with police and there are no indications of impairment. 
The semaphore violator was not identified and did not stop at the scene. On March 11, 2024, Fayette County deputies located a silver Honda Civic that had been carjacked at gunpoint earlier in the morning. Investigator Fisher found the vehicle at HWI 85 South and Stonewall Avenue and notified dispatch and fellow deputies. They prepared for a felony stop with multiple deputies in the area. Sergeant Akeen took the lead on the pursuit. The driver crashed into road signs, mailboxes, and another vehicle before exiting with a weapon. Initially armed, he surrendered when he realized he was surrounded. Show me your hands! Hands up! Put your hands up! Get on the ground! Drop the gun! Drop it! Hands up! Get down! Get on the ground! Get away from that gun! Put your hands up! A woman reported that her Subaru Outback and belongings were taken by suspects who drove off in the car. She called 911 from a nearby gas station and worked with police to track her Subaru. A shell casing was recovered from the scene. Around 9.30 p.m., officers responded to an attempted carjacking at gunpoint in the 2200 block of Finney Avenue North in the Bitter Lake neighborhood. The The suspect abandoned the vehicle and attempted to flee, but was pursued by a police dog and officers. Officers attempted to stop the young suspects near Wallingford Avenue North and North 82nd Street, but they sped away from police on State Route 99 in the stolen car. The pursuit ended at 7th Avenue North and Thomas Street. During a foot pursuit, the 12-year-old and 13-year-old boys tossed their guns, but were both arrested. The Tulsa Police Department has shared dash cam footage of the pursuit of the most wanted suspect, Madison Dixon. Unfortunately, Dixon was struck and apprehended by a Tulsa police cruiser after exchanging gunfire with officers near 91st Street and Harvard Avenue on Saturday afternoon. Denver, Colorado. On June 7, 2023, at about 7.28 p.m., a shot spotter alert for shots fired was dispatched for the area of Martin Luther King Jr. Boulevard and Cherry Street. The fuck out of the way! As the suspect fled, he turned towards the officer, changed his grip on the gun, and fired at the officer, hitting him once. The officer returned fire, hitting the suspect multiple times. You go that way. Drop it, motherfucker! I'm gonna shoot you! Drop it! Drop it! Drop it! it! Both the suspect and officer were taken to a hospital. The suspect was initially in critical condition, but has since been released and is now in custody at the Gilliam Youth Center. The officer was treated and released. In this video, troopers followed Sanchez into Elmore County where he lost control of his pickup around milepost 84. The pickup drifted into the median and nearly into oncoming traffic before swerving back onto the highway and off the right shoulder. The vehicle rolled over, ejecting a tire and Sanchez, who wasn't wearing a seatbelt, into the air in a cloud of dust. He ran away from the wreckage, crossing the interstate with Trooper Kenny Walker in pursuit. Dramatic body cam footage shows unarmed police officers chasing down a teenage gunman near a school 
and detaining him in the street. Johnny L. Barrett was wrestled to the ground and found with a loaded revolver after being arrested on a Birmingham road. Oh, oh, I am one five, we've, uh, we've got one up from that set uh, car, just by the prison. We'll get your road name shortly, Foundry Road. They activated their blue lights in an unmarked car, prompting Barrett to flee. Officers pursued them on foot and tackled them to the ground on James Turner Street. Got anything else in your kid? No, no, no. What's in there? Um, just hand got hand a knife or anything? Hand hand no sharp. <laughs> on March 24, 2024, around 11.05 a.m., 77th Street Division officers responded to a domestic violence restraining order violation in the 1700 block of West 59th Street. As the officers arrived, they saw the suspect, Brian Garay, in front of the residence. Garay fled, and officers pursued him on foot. A taser was used, and Garay was struck in the chest and stomach, causing him to fall to the ground. Hey! You're gonna get tased! You're gonna get tased! Get on the ground! Get on the ground! Stay by, stay by, stay by! Stay by! He was taken into custody, and Los Angeles Fire Department personnel transported him to a local hospital. Garay was admitted to the hospital in critical condition, but has since been updated to stable condition. No officers or community members were injured during the incident. At dusk in Florida, a suspect wanted on multiple charges fled from a traffic stop, sparking a dramatic police chase that lasted over five minutes. The pursuit ended when three police vehicles surrounded the suspect, leading to his arrest. He was handcuffed and placed into a police van as night fell. On August 30th, 2021, around 12.40 p.m., U.S. Marshals requested assistance from the Macomb County Sheriff's Office to stop 32-year-old homicide suspect, Kamari Kennedy. Kennedy, driving a town and country minivan, was spotted by undercover agents and followed northbound on Grosbeck. A Macomb County Sheriff's Sergeant identified the vehicle at Grosbeck and Cass in Matt Clemens. Out there, uh, anybody? We're going to see if uh, maybe we can get something Sterling. Okay, this vehicle is occupied twice. I got a passenger also. When the sergeant activated his lights and sirens, Kennedy fled on the shoulder, initiating a pursuit. The chase ended when a second deputy intervened, causing the minivan to crash into a parked vehicle. The cops then ordered Kennedy to show his hands and remain still. He was eventually arrested. All right, I'm going to need the ambulance. Start the ambulance. On April 15, 2021, Jeremy Thrasher, 22, led Michigan State Police on a 10-minute chase from Comstock Township through downtown Kalamazoo, going the wrong way through the city's busy one-way streets. Northbound on south, uh, westbound on Charles. <sighs> Thrasher, who was wanted for an April 13th shooting, crashed his vehicle on North Park Street and fled on foot before being apprehended by police. He is awaiting a preliminary examination and faces multiple felony charges related to the shooting and chase. He's now heading south on Wallace Street. At 5.40 p.m., Officers spotted Bresnahan driving near Dale Mabry Highway and Spruce Street and began following him. Eight minutes later, he pointed the gun at the officers, who then chased him. The officers attempted to stop the chase using spike strips, but Bresnahan drove around them. We can have one vehicle, one. Let's get one marked cars up here. We got anybody northbound up towards, uh, like... The pursuit was headed northbound on Florida Avenue, 
when he crashed into a blue car occupied by both a driver and passenger near the intersection of Gladys Street. Immediately after the crash, Bresnahan opened fire on TPD officers. 18 officers returned fire, striking and taking the life of the man. Whoa, shots fired, shots fired. We've got multiple shots fired. The video shows 17-year-old Nichelle Hill fleeing from police during a traffic stop at Omaha and Heartland Drives. Hill was initially pulled over after a report of a package theft on Arrowhead Drive. The entire incident lasted under five minutes. Dash cam footage shows an officer following Hill's vehicle and enacting emergency lights. Hill stops for about 15 seconds before speeding off. Hill continues at a high speed, making several turns on residential streets. After about a minute, she loses control on Heartland Drive, crashes through a tree, and her vehicle flips before resting on its wheels. Los Angeles, California. On January 14, 2024, at around 8.51 a.m., Los Angeles police officers observed a blue Audi SUV driving recklessly near 6th Street and Whitmer Avenue. The driver was later identified as Mark Gonzalez. After following the vehicle for several blocks, the officers initiated a pursuit. During the chase, officers crashed into a light pole and lost sight of the vehicle, ending the pursuit. An air unit later located the Audi near Pico Boulevard and San Pedro Avenue, where another unit resumed the chase. Southbound, correction, eastbound, 12th Street. The pursuit ended at Hooper Avenue and 12th Street when Gonzalez lost control and hit a curb. Gonzalez exited the vehicle with a handgun and walked toward an arriving rampart unit. Despite multiple orders to drop the weapon, Gonzalez raised the handgun, prompting an officer involved shooting. He was struck and collapsed on the sidewalk. Officers rendered aid until Los Angeles Fire Department personnel arrived. On August 22, 2022, just before 10.30 a.m., Kennewick Police Department officers responded to a report of a person sleeping in a vehicle parked at Circle K on 7707W Deschutes Avenue 2, Benton County Sheriff's deputies nearby assisted. They attempted to wake James West, who appeared to be inserting a screwdriver into the ignition. When ordered out of the vehicle by an officer, West reached for a firearm and then fled. West ran north on Columbia Center Boulevard, where an officer's taser failed to stop him. He proceeded toward an apartment complex at 425 North Columbia Center Boulevard, drew a gun from his waist, and ignored repeated commands to drop it, firing his weapon before running into the complex. Drop the gun! Drop the gun! Drop the gun! Drop the gun! Hang on to his back, he's got a gun! Get on the f out! Newly released body camera footage shows a 12-year-old boy leading Doña Ana County deputies on a pursuit and crashing on September 12, 2021. The sheriff's office received calls about a juvenile recklessly driving an SUV in Las Alturas, New Mexico. Deputies tried to stop the vehicle, but the juvenile evaded them. He picked up three passengers, aged 12 to 15, in a parking lot. The vehicle stopped, the passengers exited, and the driver continued through parking lots. The chase ended when the SUV collided head-on with another vehicle while driving in the wrong direction. Deputies found 9mm ammunition and a discarded handgun. The 12-year-old, seen crying, was questioned as paramedics arrived. Florida Highway Patrol has released dash camera footage of a trooper apprehending a suspect after he intentionally struck her patrol car with his vehicle and then led her on a high-speed chase through bumper-to-bumper -bumper traffic on the Florida Turnpike. It's 
Trooper Franceschi pursued the Honda as the driver sped down the emergency lane and the shoulder of the highway, past thick traffic. The trooper was able to conduct a pursuit intervention technique, pushing the Honda into a wall and making it impossible for the suspect to escape. Hello. 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 